Hey guys, Peter here to do an album review. Today I'm here to talk to you guys about a band from Finland called Damage SFP. They're releasing their debut album after 30 years of being around. The name of the album is self-titled Damage SFP and the album is coming out June 14th on Rock Shots Records. The album has 11 tracks and it's 38 minutes in length. Now, the album is made up of songs that they created over that 30 year span. So this is, it, it, and it really shows. It shows on the tracks as you're listening to the album because some of the tracks have a more modern approach to the structure and some tracks have a more of an old school thrash metal sound almost like i would say late 80s it really has that late 80s thrash metal raw feel to the record heavy fast with blistering riffs uh, that is the core of the album but like i said because the album was was created over a span of 30 years you really feel like some songs have a more modern approach to it specifically in the structure of the songs Overall, the album is a thrash metal album, but there are some sprinkles of death metal in it. Very fainted sprinkles here and there, specifically more from the drum side and even a little bit on the vocals. I, I really feel like there's enough of there for you to notice that there's a little bit of a death metal influence into the record, but nothing that is enough to really take away from the thrash metal sound and overall feel that this record really has and that it carries it through uh, throughout the 11 tracks. The overall feel of the album is really one that has a lot of rawness, but it really comes together as a full record. Even though the album was created, like I said, the songs were created over a span of 30 years, the songs don't necessarily feel disconnected from one another because there, there is a, a similar approach to how each song was put together. There is a similar structure. So while there are some changes from track to track, overall, they still feel very uniform and they still feel very binded together. There's a lot of, uh, of the same characteristics track after track after track enough to kind of bind them all together and not allow the listener to really feel like this is a broken record if you will. A record made up of tracks that were made all over the place and now they're just being put together almost as a collection as a greatest hits. Now there is one track on this album that, uh, that allows the album to slow down. I was not a big fan of this track by the way. This track is called Insomnium. It's an acoustic instrumental track that comes around the midway point. I understand why they put a track like that in the midway point of a record because you really have an album. This album is like blistering in terms of speed, guitar riffs, drums from the beginning to the end. So having this song in the middle of the record, almost at the midway point, really allows the listener to catch a little bit of a breath, to catch a breather before you get uh, you get to face the second half of the album. So I understand why is it there. I wouldn't have necessarily put it there because I feel like this album is one of those that it's okay, it has momentum, it has speed, it has fast tempos, but even built within the songs, there are moments that allow you to catch your breath, or there are moments that allow you to put your head out, if you will. So I don't necessarily feel like a song like this needs to be there in the middle. I, I would have loved to see this song perhaps as the outro of the album, to finish off the album with a very melodic acoustic track. I think that perhaps would have been better or incorporate this track as an intro to another track. I also think that would have worked because this track, as it's created, it has a little bit of, of Unforgiven slash Nothing Else Matters vibe to it, specifically the Nothing Else Matters acoustic vibe to it. The mood kind of falls more into the side of Unforgiven. So there are some cool elements in there. I just kind of think they get lost in the middle of the record. Either you put it at the end of the record, or to me, they should have incorporated it as part of a larger song. Uh, uh, use this almost as an intro to build in an intro into a different track. Overall, the album really has, like I said before, that late 80s vibe. I really listening to this album felt almost like I was listening to a throwback Testament record. There are a lot of similarities, specifically with the music, not necessarily with the vocals. I like the vocals on this record, uh, but it, it really leaves me wonder. This man is from Finland. This style, this approach, this aggressiveness, this rawness that this album has, if the vocals were in Finnish, I think it would have been a lot better. It would have had a much larger impact. It would carry a lot more rawness to the songs. It would carry a lot more significance, a lot more meaning. And they were, they would have been able to create songs that from a lyrical perspective would have been more intricate, more elaborate. I, I really feel like this band should highly consider at least trying it out, uh, putting a couple of songs together where you're singing in Finnish instead of English. I think it would really push the envelope a little bit for the band, it would create something something that, that would have even more of a punch, if you will. Having said that, I enjoy the vocals. They're not your necessarily typical thrash metal style vocals. Uh, they almost, in some songs, had more of a sludge vibe. 
uh, and some others had more of a death metal vibe, but overall I really like the vocals, overall I really like the album, I like the rawness that it has, it has a really raw feel to it, and like I said, it has a really throwback sound to the early testament days of the late 80s, so I really enjoyed that, it's a really pleasant listening experience, and if you're a fan of thrash metal, I highly consider it. I would highly consider you guys taking a look at this record because you're not going to be disappointed. It really has a lot of those old school components in it. As far as songs are concerned, I picked three songs that I really enjoyed. One of them is Death of Innocence. Uh, Death of Innocent is a song that I, I really gravitated to at the moment I started listening to the record. It starts off with an audio movie intro. It really sets the, the mood as far as the lyrical content, as far as the message of the song is concerned. The song kicks off with aggression from the guitar riffs and the drums. The drums and the riffs in this song are really paired really well together to give the song a lot of momentum, a lot of tempo, a lot of aggressiveness, a lot of heaviness as well. The chorus kind of sees a change a little bit. The guitars in the chorus become a little bit more melodic. The song doesn't lose any aggressiveness from it. Uh, it, it remains aggressive throughout, but I really feel like in the chorus there's a little bit more of a melodic approach as far as the guitars are concerned. After the second chorus, you get a really long stretch of, of drums and guitar melody together, uh, a very, uh, I'm not gonna say groovy, but a very melodic riff uh, mixed in with the drum track right after the second chorus that really extends itself. Perhaps where, where you would expect a solo to come in, they didn't introduce a solo, they just introduced this really stretched out melodic piece. And I really like that because it gave the song almost a metal core structure without the breakdowns, but almost a metal core structure into a thrash metal song and they didn't incorporate a solo where perhaps you would be expecting a solo. So the fact that they did this little bit of a change there, to me that was interesting. To me that that piqued my interest immediately the moment I'm listening to the song because it didn't allow the song to be what I was expecting the song to be. One of those that falls into a mold where you have versus chorus, versus chorus, solo, solo, chorus, song ends. It was almost like that, but they did enough of a little bit of a tweak there to make it sound different and give the listener something different. Another song I want to talk about is Ode to Sorrow. This one starts with a killer, killer bass line, a killer bass intro with the drums besides the, the, the bass to really give this, this uh, heavier, uh, more somber feel to the intro of the song to really match well with the lyrics, with the lyrical content of the song. So I really like that. Once the guitars kick in, it didn't become super aggressive. This is one of the more melodic, more mellowed out, more methodic songs on the record. And a lot of it has to do with how the song really allows the, the lyrics to come to life. So the two kind of are paired up with each other. The two kind of feed off of each other. The, the mood of the lyrics are representative with the mood of the song. So for a song like this, you really need it to be more methodic, more subtle. It doesn't need to be very aggressive, very over the top. It's not a ballad by no means, but it is a very a very melodic song, a more methodic song, it has a more methodic approach. Uh, the drums on this track are absolutely killer. They switch off a little bit here and there, sometimes becoming more aggressive, more than the guitars with a double pedaling on the bass. Uh, it becomes a lot more aggressive even than the sound of the guitars on the, on the track. And I like that. I like the nuances that the drums, the drums on this track are really what's setting the tempos and really what's changing the mood of the track as the track moves along. Last but not least, In Termination, my favorite song on the album. I love the chorus of this song. This song has a great tempo to it. It's a fast, blistering song from the beginning, from the moment it starts to the moment it ends. There are some moments here and there where you're allowed to uh, kind of uh, grab a breath of air because the song kind of slows down a little bit. But those, those are just short bursts that come in and out of the song. Overall, this is a very robust, very thick song that has heavy guitars, heavy drums, and blistering speeds from both. Just very fast tempo, high energetic song, but it has one of my favorite uh, choruses of all of the album. I really like what they did with the chorus on this song. It's really magnificent, it's really catchy, it's very melodic. You almost feel the pain uh, in the vocal delivery of the chorus. It really allows you to connect well with the lyrics. So I really like what they've done here as far as the chorus of this song is concerned. I immediately gravitated towards this track. All right, guys, this is it. This is Damage SFP with their debut record after 30 years. They've been working on this record for 30 years. The name of the album is Damage SFP, out June 14th on Rockshot Records. If you like thrash metal, go check these guys out. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I'll be reading those as always and getting back to you. Take care, guys.